Good, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, just a quick sound check. <laughs> Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, I realise the irony of asking this question, but if you can hear me on your questions pane, there is a little pane you can just quick, quick, uh, put a quick in, uh, quick, yes, I can hear you all loud and clear, something like that. Just make sure that the system's working. Oh, blimey, yes, there's loads of you. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much for those of you. <laughs> Excellent, that's great. Thanks everyone, I appreciate that. Okay. So yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Um, gonna have a quick webinar, about three quarters of an hour, just on um, subjects of preparing for your remote audit. Um, it's obviously a subject that is very relevant and, uh, and, and pertinent at this moment in time. So I'm just gonna run through some of the, the ideas and, uh, and areas to consider as part of your uh, preparation. Most of it based upon obviously my own experience, but obviously the uh, the arrangements we've been making within NQA as part of your uh, remote audits. So hopefully uh, there'll be some some value to it to you guys. Um, now you will get a recording, oh sorry, a copy if you like of uh, of the slides that I'm presenting, as well as a copy of this recording as well will be made available. Um, now there is opportunity to ask questions. Uh, you're going to have to forgive me. I won't um, answer them as I'm going along because it may interrupt the flow. But what I would do, if there's, um, depending upon the number and, and size and shape of them at the end, I'll do my best to answer them kind of over this webinar. Uh, failing that, I'll be answering them uh, on the screen as, as um, uh, towards the end there. So we'll see how we get on. But um, say, so feel free to take notes. And um, like I say, I can't hear you, <laughs> although you can hear me. Um, but obviously, um, if you have some questions at the end, should you so desire. So we'll kick off there. Then. <clears throat> Just a little bit about um, us at NQA, for those of you that don't know who we are. Um, obviously, this isn't a, uh, a big marketing thing, but certainly you, you get copies of this slide and you can go to our website and find all the information that you need. But just a little bit of context there for you, of who we are, where we operate, uh, some facts and figures there that uh, should be of interest to, to some, if not all of you. Okay, a second slide there, just a little bit about our, our promise to you. Uh, a couple of things there with regards to our net promoter score and our experience and, and price promise and so on. Like I say, you will get copies of this, so feel free to peruse this at your leisure. And if there are any questions, feel free to uh, come back to any one of us uh, in the office. I'm more than happy to discuss any of it with you. <clears throat> So just a quick little bit about me. It's not all about me, but just so you know who on earth is talking to you uh, this afternoon. My name is Martin Graham. I am the training manager and also uh, a lead field auditor uh, with NQA. Uh, I cover 9001, 14001, 45001, 50001 in the SSRP scheme. Lots of zeros there on standards. Um, been in the industry for since about 2002. So coming up 19 years now, just shy. Um, been with NQA since uh, September, or sorry, April of 2018. So coming up three years now. So um, yep, got quite quite a bit of experience with auditing. Um, obviously, remote auditing has been a new experience for me, certainly over the last uh, nine ten months or so. And obviously, part of today is to share those experiences and, and ideas and, and thoughts with you, just on uh, helping uh, helping you prepare for that process. Okay. So like it says there, the webinar is, is aimed to help you prepare for your remote audit uh, with NQA supporting you with advanced preparation and what to expect from the audit itself. So some of the things that you know that I've encountered and uh, just gonna share those with you. Okay, pick up some benefits and some tips and, and techniques. And uh, also we're gonna cover a bit towards the end about kind of some of the things to consider when doing your remote internal audits as well. Obviously there's a separate you know, uh, process and, and training on that, but I will run through a couple of ideas uh, for you towards the end of the presentation. Okay. <clears throat> so, Straight off the bat, then remote audits. Okay, it's um, just going to walk, talk through these slides, and obviously expand on some of the points as we're going along. So, um, first question, then, obviously, kind of, it seems relatively uh, obvious, but what is a remote audit? Okay, so fundamentally, it's a normal audit. That is to say, you know, it's an audit against the same criteria that, that you'll currently be certified to or audited to. That is undertaken using a suitable ICT platform. Um, for those of you who don't know, ICT is information. Communication technology, just a fancy, an extra letter from IT there. Okay, so a remote audit is one that's conducted partially or completely off site. Uh, the audit will cover everything that is usually covered on site, but uses technology to support the auditor when a site visit is not possible or appropriate. So essentially, here the, the, the process is the same in the sense that the standards that you're you're certified to and that you're auditing to, they don't change. Um, the, the, the grading of findings they haven't changed. Um, you know, kind of the all, all that's changed essentially as part of this process is the methods by which we're obtaining the audit evidence. Okay, and we'll go on to that a little bit further as we go along. But fundamentally, the audit process is the same in terms 
terms of duration, approach, people that need to be made available, and so on. It's just that mechanism of how we're getting that information from you. Like it says there, there may be use of emails, phone calls, screen share, videos, photographs, um, <laughs> carrier pigeons, uh, cups and string, whatever means of, of getting the information through to us, uh, we, we, we're able to, to, to kind of um, to adopt those uh, those means. Um, and as I say, more my experience of doing this since March of last year is that all of those work. Um, there's no right or definitive way of doing it. It's whatever suits you as an organisation and we can make work with you. That's, that's the important thing to remember. Fundamentally, the scope of the audit remains the same, that is to say your scope of certification and indeed the, the, the management system standards or the criteria that you're certified to, that remains the same, that hasn't changed and indeed our reporting mechanism um, in terms of you know, kind of the, the, the report format that you receive at the end of it, that hasn't changed either, so that, that remains the same. Now, the duration may change ever so slightly. Obviously, this is on a case by case basis, um, just as it says there, to allow for site based activity. Um, now, it may be that obviously um, there, there may be some of the audits that we undertake, there may be elements of those that it's just not practical to undertake kind of a remote uh, element of, such as maybe construction or under health and safety or something like that. But we may need to defer a little bit of time just, just to accommodate for that, but we will endeavour to undertake the, the vast majority, if not all, of the audit and cover it uh, as a, a remote platform. <clears throat> Like I said there, the purpose remains the same, uh, the objectives of the audit remain the same, and we will, of course, support you through it. It's, um, we're all kind of, uh, I don't want to sound a cliche, but we're all in this thing together. Um, obviously, we, we, the objectives are the same. We want to get you through it, maintain your certification, and, uh, and kind of go through the process and support you with it. So we will help you through it. Okay. So what should you expect then? Um, okay. So... Like it says there, we mentioned previously, the remote audit will typically be the same duration as your on-site audit. So that is to say, if you currently have a, a one-day surveillance with us, um, that, will, that will be the same. It won't be extended to a day and a half or two days, whatever it may be. The audit duration, so audit opening meetings, closing meetings, lunches and so on, that remains the same. So it's, we're trying to keep this as consistent as possible for everyone. <clears throat> You will need to be available at all times uh, and we'll be dialed into a conference call for most of the audit duration. Now, you, we don't need um, your full and undivided attention for the entire audit because that would be just unreasonable. Um, we don't expect that any time, but obviously uh, you will need to be available as a point of contact so that we can um, we can be, be put in the direction that we need to and kind of facilitate the audit um, for all of us. Okay. Remote audits, uh, from my own experience, this as well, and it's um, from, through talking to my colleagues, remote audits are also best delivered using screen share. It's, um, you know, you can have obviously conversations like this over, over telephones and so on, but to have information in front of you in the screen uh, that can be uh, talked through in a live environment, if you like, as best it can be, that we found that a very effective way of, of being, uh, of undertaking a remote audit, okay? And also as well, it kind of, it just reduces a little bit of the traffic of kind of emails and sharing documents and so on that, that can still take place of course but kind of sharing with screen information where it's practical to do so is uh, we found is a, a very useful and um, serviceable way of, of undertaking the audit okay now you may also be asked or you know kind of you may wish to volunteer uh, emailing documents or sending documents via various there's various platforms you can use kind of such as we transfer or dropbox and, and so on and so forth various platforms we can all use nowadays and obviously they can be used to illustrate <clears throat> Uh, and provide the audit evidence that may be required to support the point that, that that's being made. <clears throat> An important thing to note there is that any information you do send us will be managed in accordance uh, with our confidentiality and data privacy policies, all of which are available uh, on the website upon request, and, um, and obviously and, and in regard to our rules related to registration, which uh, we can get a copy to you as well. But all the information, it doesn't get held, it will help, it gets held uh, confidentially uh, and uh, obviously I know for me, I, I delete information off once the audit's completed because uh, it's uh, it just it, it just proves vast otherwise. <clears throat> so then in terms of preparation then, okay, so a few things to consider and some of this is from uh, uh, my own experience certainly and the arrangements that we've made so far. Things to consider, okay, so which platform are you going to use? There's a number out there, they've obviously grown in number, certainly over the last 12 months it seems, but certainly the last few years. Um, there's a number of options, Teams, Skype, Zoom, GoToMeeting, Google Meets, and so on and so forth. Um, we've been using, successfully I might add, uh, we've defaulted to Teams, 
uh, it comes across as a very stable platform. It allows for kind of breaking out into various other teams for, um, you know, screen sharing information, for sharing documents via chat and so on and so forth. So we found that to be a useful platform. Um, and that's the one that we were encouraging um, clients to use. Obviously, it's not mandatory. You may have your own preferred platform, but that's the one that we've been using. OK, <clears throat> what I would say is obviously it's the one that kind of suits you best and your auditor will, will be in touch, whoever that may be. And they should be in touch to liaise with you on yet to sort out the, um, the best the best platform to use. OK. Part of preparation, certainly what resources will need to be available for the audit and when. OK, it's uh, the same rules apply to some degree as, a, as an on-site audit. You know, we need to make the right people available at the right time. But obviously, um, if if people are spread over <laughs> land and sea and various geographically loca geographical locations, obviously, it's important to make sure that the, the right people are available at the right time. And that comes on to part of the planning process, which we'll come on to in a short while. OK. Third point there, are the resources familiar with the technology? I think um, at the beginning of all this, we were a little bit hesitant with regards to technology and kind of which buttons to press. I still leave myself on mute, no end of times and so on and so forth. It's an easy mistake to make, but I think the point we're making there is that, you know, get people familiar with it so that they can actually kind of engage with and, um, you know, kind of interact on the platform, it's important. Um, it may be <clears throat> that you need to provide some training or instruction on that internally and things, you know, do they have the hardware, software needed, you know, things like webcams and so on and so forth. It's, it seems like a default nowadays, but obviously just make sure that's in place to support that. <clears throat> So other thing to consider there, what areas is it practical to audit remotely? OK, so obviously, um, you know, some parts of your organization for one reason or another may not may be in reduced capacity or maybe not functioning at all. So part of that preparation is to make sure that, you know, that the um, we, we, we can understand and interact with you and communicate on what areas are act active. Um, and if they're not, the way that we can overcome that as need be. OK, so it's important to maintain that communication with us in the early stages, which we'll come on to. <clears throat> So do you need to confirm some information security arrangements? Obviously, it's um, the amount of information flying around is, is just vast nowadays, uh, even more so over the last uh, few months or so. Um, if there's arrangements you need to make or confirm with us with regards to secure transmittal and so on and so forth, um, if there's permission needs to be made from, you know, from a contractual side of things or compliance obligation, uh, make sure that's kind of confirmed and arranged beforehand for all part of your preparation uh, process. Continue then on the preparation side of things. So, yeah, as you would expect, remote auditing itself is heavily reliant upon technology. It's, um, it's you know, <laughs> we've had to, a bit of accelerated learning. I know for me, I, I never did a remote audit in my life prior to March of last year, and now I'm doing them, it's like 99% of them, certainly over the last uh, few months have been remote. And, um, you know, it was a learning curve, but they've been, as time has gone on, um, they've become, I, I find they're very effective. Um, I've had, a lot majority of clients were very complimentary about the process and they find that obviously it's a good way of maintaining the momentum without um, obviously having the disruption of having to defer audits and delay them and so on okay so again so some of the two, two simple points then just to consider uh, as part of you know kind of a radio remote audit okay so system which allow for an online conference call is certainly obviously you know, nothing wrong with having telephone calls that's absolutely fine but obviously uh for allowing a conference call with multiple members of the same team that's absolutely fine it's um it allows for obviously you know a, a degree of interaction which is always nice uh cc faces and, and and so on and so forth so people kind of kind of have that level of interaction uh, obviously it's not the same as being in the boardroom or the meeting room but um it, it kind of facilitates it as best you can okay um if you don't have access to this, obviously we can, like as I mentioned earlier, we've been using uh, Teams and um, you don't have to have Teams installed on your system. Um, the invite, if you, if you just send you the invite via Outlook, it can just, it goes into your diary. You can just pick it up, click the link. It's ever so simple, literally one click and you're in. <laughs> Remember to unmute yourself, turn your camera on um, and then select your background and then and off you go. It's, it's a nice stable platform that we've been using, okay? If online connectivity isn't possible, which is, 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 is sometimes the case, um, we may re resort to kind of email, obviously, and then follow that up with kind of telephone calls or whatever means necessary just to kind of get that information exchange going. Um, I say not, not expect to have undivided attention for the entire duration, but obviously to have you have someone there as a point of contact. And also as well, another thing, make sure that you've got um, mitigation in place, you know, so if there is a failure in ICT system, you've got te each other's telephone uh, numbers and so on and so forth, so you can make contact. Like it says, please ensure if you're familiar with the technology prior to your audit to avoid unnecessary delays. 
absolutely nothing wrong. I'm doing a couple this week, in fact, of uh, clients who are new to the system, new to new to remote auditing. So I'm going to have just a quick 10, 15 minutes with them or maybe longer just to kind of engage, have a little dry run, if you like, of the platform just to get people uh, used to kind of what's going on. I'm more than happy to do that. And I'm sure my colleagues uh, at NQA will be happy to do that for you guys as well. So if there's anything you want to do a couple of weeks before, just have the conversation. We can run you through the process, run you through the format and see how we get on. <clears throat> okay, so documentation, as it invariably is, because it's a requirement within the standard for documentation or documenting information, it will inevitably be requested, okay? So if you've been subject to the audit before, then hopefully the requirements are well practiced. Um, obviously, if this is your first time, then the auditor may need to expose you to all policies and activities under scope. So I guess what we're saying there is that if you're going through a, a routine surveillance or, or reassessment, whatever it may be, hopefully you'll be fairly familiar with kind of what's going to be expected and, and so on and so forth in terms of documentation. If it's a new audit, a stage two or something like that, obviously it's entirely within your rights to not be entirely familiar. So you be, be sure to kind of communicate with your auditor so that you can both establish what's needed and when in the format that's, 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 that, that, that can um, obviously facilitate the audit. So um, I think that's Probably a point that will come up later as well. It mentioned obviously if your management system is um, like hard copy or there's elements of hard copy systems elements in there, then we may need to request that those are kind of scanned in. Kind of you don't want to be doing this kind of prior to the audit, uh, sorry, during the audit because it can cause delays there. So um, th as much as we can prepare beforehand in terms of information, we can send in a kind of a, a mass through to us. We can um, that, that, that's usually the best way of making it as effective as possible. Okay. So like it says there, collating these prior to the audit date and understanding where to obtain pertinent audit information is good preparation, preparatory activity. So making sure that you can put your hands on things you need to rummage around. There will be things, of course, that you know that will come up during the on the day itself or on the days themselves. Um, so it'll be live retrieval of information. Absolute, that, that's absolutely fine. But the more, the more the more that you can get prepared and ready to issue over is um, is a good idea, good practice. And like it says, they obviously part of preparing, you know, it's, it's easy to overthink all these, any audit is, you know, it can be an anxious time, but there's no need to be obviously, um, you know, relax, obviously, you know, we, 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 we're here to do the job, we, we'll engage with you as the same as we normally would, we'll have the same conversations um, and, uh, and and get you through it and over the line as need be, okay, this, this whole process is, is important to you as it is to us, okay. And a, a, an important thing there, obviously, uh, something I've learned through my own experience is taking breaks, kind of build breaks into, into into proceedings, if you like, have the opening, go for the period of time, break off, just make obviously maintain the discipline between keeping to, you know, kind of the, the times and having steps away from the screen and so on, because it can be, you know, a reasonably long day in front of a screen and that's no good for, for anyone. Okay. So part of the preparation then, okay, so like we mentioned earlier about the availability of the relevant personnel. So for example, obviously, uh, those of you who have had experience with audits, obviously there's a requirement for top management engagement. Under health and safety audits, there are particular uh, auditees or interviewees that need to be made available. Your auditor will be more than happy to discuss those with you and clarify any points. They should all be included within the audit plan, but obviously if you're in any doubt at all, um, just make sure you communicate with us because we can, we can make those arrangements beforehand because obviously with a remote audit, it's not quite as easy as um, being able to just walk over to a separate department or across the hall or across the landing and see and speak to that person. It's um, We need to make sure that people are available if they're in a different location. And also, as well as well as making sure that they are available, make sure that access to the relevant information. You know, for example, if someone is uh, working from home, whereas normally they would be working it on the site, uh, and all the information is on site and they can't get access to it, that can cause a headache as well. So, um, as well as making sure the right people are available, make sure they can have access to the correct information that may be necessary. Now, that may be via, um, like I say, a dial-up process, or it may be via, you know get information scanned in that they've got ready to present and so on, but obviously just, just making sure that it's there. So if you're working remotely, they are the same as we are, um, that's that's absolutely fine. We can we can we can liaise with engage with you in whatever means necessary. But obviously if that is the case, you still need to make sure as in, in a real life audit situation, so to speak, um, the information is available uh, to those auditees. <clears throat> So establish and confirm how you're going to review and share information. Okay, so like I said, screen sharing, absolutely fine. It's a good way of doing it. It allows for that kind of live sharing of information, if you like. Uh, scan documents, absolutely. Uh, copies of job files, root cards, purchase orders, screenshots, like I say, photographs, videos, etc. 
it, obviously in terms of the videos um, that can be undertaken kind of that can be like a, a pre-recorded but ideally sometimes we may ask um, that there's kind of a, if you like a, a live tour if you like obviously within the, the, the taking into account health and safety obviously um, but we may ask for kind of physical tour of premises and so on if indeed it's, it's practical and safe to do so uh, under the current guidelines and circumstances um, obviously to some degree that's more relevant for um, kind of health and safety environmental but certainly from a quality side of things as well, we may need to kind of talk to people operating a particular function or process. So we may go and talk to them or ask that we've spoken to or interview those people, you know, as, as, as on the side. OK, the critical part of all of this, like I said, is to is to plan and communicate. OK, especially if there's an audit team, if it's a single auditor can be a little bit it's, it's easy to kind of you know keep in keep in touch and kind of you know maintain that momentum obviously if there's an audit team and there's multiple departments and so on um it's, it's really is important that kind of you, we, we communicate with you certainly and likewise if you could let, let let us know if there's any concerns or anything you're unsure about the process we're more than happy to spend uh, spend time with you and, and discuss what, what, what's required okay <clears throat> We will obviously, as part of the preparation, we'll, we'll confirm what the objective of the audit is and agree that it can be achieved. Like I say, obviously, this all needs to be undertaken within the realms of practicality, obviously safety and well-being for everyone. Um, but our intention is to obviously just keep this momentum going, keep the certification process going with as minimal disruption as possible so that we can we can come out the other side of this as unscathed as possible. But obviously, we will communicate with you. If there are elements of the audit that need to be deferred for whatever reason, we can discuss that with you as well. So there's ways of overcoming all of this. So just to go a little bit um, uh, deeper on in the, in the preparation side of things. So from a personnel perspective then, okay. So like I mentioned earlier, the person or persons responsible will need to be available for the entirety of the audit as a point of contact, as with on site. So um, although we may be not face to face, it's important we've got that continual constant uh, point of contact there if need be, either by email or phone that we can dial into, make contact with. I, I, on my audits, I know that once I set up Teams meeting, I tend to leave that running for the, just the entire day, just leave that open in the background turn my microphone off and um, and camera off as need be um, and obviously lunch times and so on but obviously then people can be invited into that and it just keeps a, a stable platform sometimes as well it's um, it gives me a bit of company if <laughs> I've got an audit team with me it's um, it's nice to have someone there to talk to rather than being in the house on my own so um, for that reason as well uh, any key personnel will need to be available for the relevant parts of the audit absolutely like we say so that could be obviously top management that can be um, uh, health and safety representatives process owners and so on and like we said earlier it's important that they've got access to the same platform and are familiar with the same platform information as as everyone else there so like i say not expected for the duration but to be available as need be within the within the audit okay leadership individuals absolutely so top management there uh, in attendance there same with opening and closing meetings as with um, any normal on-site audit, so to speak, okay? So just in terms of uh, documentation then, we mentioned it a couple of times, obviously, we'll, we will review as much of the management system as possible remotely, obviously, just to, because that's sometimes a practical way of doing it. You won't need to see us watch, sit there and watch us do that, obviously, if you send information through. We can have to review that over a period of time. Then there may be questions we can compile back. I know when I'm auditing, if I've got information, I'll ask get a bank of questions, go back to the person and then get the, inf get the information there. And then if it's a case of walking through like live, then that's absolutely fine as well. But obviously um, we, we, we look to review that as much as possible remotely so it can minimize the disruption. Like I said, so be, 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 be aware of any information security processes you may have internally, like I mentioned already there. If there's uh, information that needs, you know, uh, approval or if there's contractual obligations, just uh, be aware of or and indeed let us know of those as well so that we can um, we can make, make sure that we abide by those. If there have been any changes since your audit, uh, which no doubt there potentially could have been to processes and so on, then a visual aid, you know, just to kind of, you know, just to highlight to us what those changes may have been, uh, may just to help expedite things. Don't don't feel obliged to, but obviously if you want to kind of, you know, give us a quick summary of kind of, you know, what's changed and a contextual update and so on, um, that we're more than happy to kind of engage with that before information is sent at any point, okay? Because sometimes when you're looking at a document in isolation, it loses a bit of context there. OK, like it says there, be prepared to talk through documents and processes as you would during an on-site audit. Like I say, it's um, it's fundamentally the same. You know, the requirements of the standards haven't changed. It's just how we're getting this information. That's the only that's the only kind of rule. Well, that's a big change. It's the only part of the process that uh, the audit has changed. OK. 
so site tours then okay so obviously this question comes up uh quite a bit obviously i've done a number of kind of environmental health safety audits and so on even for from a 9001 perspective we usually undertake some form of uh site tour just to enable just to kind of you know, see the work environment the infrastructure and so on okay like it says there for standards and certifications that require a site tour or specific processes to be followed on the shop floor so to speak such as a manufacturing or construction environment uh, where possible, obviously, you should allow the assessor around using a webcam or a video call from mobile, obviously, in a safe manner and taking into consideration, obviously, all the, the relevant and necessary safety precautions and guidelines. Uh, we obviously certainly wouldn't expect anyone to do anything uh, outside of that. Uh, where it's practical and safe to do so, like I say, I've, I've had site tours undertaken using Teams via um, WhatsApp and so on. And it can, you know, you've got a remote control in order to, to some degree, you can kind of go and, and look in things and, and, and ask questions and interrogate, okay? Now, obviously, if this is not possible due to technology, health and safety, or you know the physical uh, closure of a location, then this will be followed up on an on-site and a subsequent special audit or the next audit. So obviously, we've got that kind of bit of contingency there. But if it's not possible to undertake this element of the audit, we can defer. Obviously, we're trying to keep as much <laughs> in bed as we can. But obviously, there may be some instances where it's just not possible or practical or safe to do so, uh, or indeed, you know, if we can't complete the audit objectives, we may look to defer just a bit of audit time, uh, but cover obviously the very best of the, the ground that we can uh, in a remote capacity. So it's also possible with some prior arrangement to capture relevant images as a recording before the audit. Obviously, absolutely, you know, if you want to take pictures, I was doing an audit recently where the uh, the, the client's offices had undergone a refur refurbishment. I just took some points because they weren't in the office at the moment, they were at home, everyone was working from home, but I just wanted to illustrate kind of the changes that have been made and how they affected the, the work environment. So yeah, that was fine. And we walked through those and we were able to discuss those uh, there and then, okay. So just a few more points then, just to run through. Um, so engage early with the management to outline agree any changes, okay? If there's gonna be a change to the audit plan or uh, any changes to updates to the management system, you know, we, we'll make sure that we engage with you, with you on that, okay? Understanding the level of paper or hard copy versus electronic based evidence. Like I said earlier, just um, if there's a big chunk of the system or whatever it may be that is hard copy, Obviously, you know, things can be held up to the screens via webcam, but it's not ideal and it's, it's, I found it a little bit hard work. It can be done, absolutely. It's not, not the end of the world, um, but to have things kind of, you know, prepared and, and scanned in as you need to, obviously there will be things that can be obtained as you go along, but uh, fundamentally we'd look to um, just make sure you're prepared as much as you can be, okay? Keeping on top of document requests, you know, we may send, a, I know I, 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 what I tend to do is kind of send out a, a almost a list, kind of like a list of information, the kind of documents for those auditees that are a bit unfamiliar. Keep, keep a track of that, obviously, you know, because there may be, you know, females flying around, um, but obviously make sure that it kind of comes across and is collated in a, a sensible fashion. Um, I know this is a uh, this, this can be a problem sometimes when you're sent information that is just scans and it's just you know random numbers and letters and so on. If you can if you can send information through that gives it a bit of context. So name the documents such as you know internal audits 2021 whatever it may be just helps the whole process go a little bit easier uh, rather than just um, random documents and files because it, it does happen <laughs> and it can make it a little bit. Uh, I know you like to bamboozle us all from time to time, but it's um, it can make the whole process go a bit easier and smoother if you keep a keep an a, a clear identification of what it is you're sending, okay? So like it says there, ad hoc desk interviews may not be possible. And indeed, you know, just because obviously people may be working remotely or, you know, kind of different parts of the building or whatever it may be. Um, so part of the planning process, we'll, we'll look to make sure, obviously plans can be flexible as they always can. We, we'll always be as flexible as we can be when it comes to uh, audit plans. Uh, and I always say to people, the running order isn't critical, just that we get the coverage that we need to. Obviously we try and maintain a, a logical running order when it comes to audits, but um, if that's not practical, um, we, we'll adjust and so, but obviously, like it says there, um, if people aren't going to be at their desks or if they're working from home and they've got homeschooling or childcare or whatever it may be, we can obviously make sure we, we, we can work around those as, as very best we can. Okay. A point there, unusual one, but it's happened to me. I've undertaken remote audits, believe it or not, uh, on, uh, on American clients. And um, it's, yeah, considered the time zones, it was a long day for me, but um, we, we managed to, to compromise. I started later, they started earlier and so on. We managed to overcome it. May not be relevant, but obviously if you've got a, your organization has, you know, offices around the world where there's different um, time zones and so on, you need to liaise with the auditor on that as well, okay? 
consider what's in scope or reconsider what's in scope have working practices affected the activities and functions of the business okay so yeah if, if you're obviously if people are working now working remotely and that's affected you know the way in which something is undertaken internally whatever it may be be prepared just to discuss that we'll adapt to that as well and obviously just see that it's been reflected within your management system and establish what can be audited effectively remotely okay like it says there in-person visits may still be required we kind of reserve the right so to speak and also as well if you if you more, feel more comfortable with that but obviously we will we will kind of you know kind of really try and try and get the bulk of the audit if not all of it carried out remotely because it has been working and continues to work very effectively for us and, and, and the clients so far Okay, so critical again to the whole process. Planning is uh, is critical. It's important at the very best of times, uh, but even at the moment, it's even more so. Um, probably the audit plans I've been preparing are, are, are containing a lot more detail. Okay, in terms of kind of the indicative records that may be required, you know, kind of more detail on timing so that people can actually work to those. So, and we will again, like I say, we will we liaise with you on that. We'll undertake the communication that that, that we need to. Like it says there, give detail on timings, personnel needed, specific areas to cover, for example, or actual records, you know, so kind of you can get a, a feel, a bit, bit of a better feel, a feel of kind of what we're going to be asking for and, and next to see. Okay. Give instruction on preparation. Like I say, more time may be needed for auditors to prepare. It's um, like I say, we're contacting clients uh, uh, six weeks or so beforehand, just to kind of set the scene, do the introduction, say what's going to be happening, and obviously build towards that and build it. Like I said earlier, build in times for for dummy runs, for trial runs, for kind of you know, conversations over the phone, whatever it may be, just to kind of make sure everyone's kind of in on the same page. Um, yeah, so give instructions on the methods and approach to the audit absolutely have the conversations that you need to um try and minimize distraction absolutely part of preparation i know we all had it um say my, my daughter's out this afternoon but she was here this morning um i kept her away but um i think we all live in the real world that's the reality obviously and we're all coping with an unusual situation but um yeah where you can minimize the distraction obviously just keep the focus on the audit where at all possible but obviously that we will factor that in we're, we're all human at the end of the day <clears throat> So how has remote auditing changed things then, apart from <laughs> entirely? Uh, to some degree, it's changed things, obviously, like a, fundamentally, like my working practices have changed beyond recognition. You know, I, I used to be out doing an awful lot of uh, miles every week, different clients now have not left where I live for, you know, goodness knows how long. But um, th there are some pros and cons. Um, with, with, I've actually personally, I think, thank you, eh, we found it's especially quite, been quite a positive process overall. It's um, it allows for a good testing of a system. Uh, we can go kind of a little bit deeper. Uh, I've had comments back from clients saying it was, they've actually really, like, they actually enjoyed the audit, believe it or not. Um, they enjoyed that it went into a lot more depth. I kind of, you know, allowed for a lot more, almost more engagement to some degree. It was, um, that they were very pleased with the way that it went. Um, communication, obviously it's highlighted that, you know, that's a, a, an important part of the, of the process there. Has led to more creative questions in terms of, you know, obviously, it, when you're having to kind of write things down in terms of an email or pose a question in a particular way to get the information, we found that that's been a positive thing as well. Um, it's allowed for more effective, more detailed planning, and indeed, believe it or not, you know, kind of to some degree less less, less stress for, for for the client. It's uh, we have noticed that they've obviously been a bit concerned about kind of how this whole thing may affect their certification, and obviously internally, and you know. Is it, do they want us coming to site and so on? Obviously, we've now said, well, okay, we don't need to. We can still service um, service the needs and service the process effectively. Okay. So cons then, okay, for the for the cynical amongst us, um, potential to hide evidence. Okay, obviously it's uh, it, it's a risk there, but not entirely um, founded. Um, it may be that you may not get to speak with as many employees as you may like. Obviously, you know, because people may be on in, in various locations or, or out of the equation for whatever reason. And there's obviously the, the, the potential there for technological failure. It's, uh, yeah, mine's been very stable, I touch wood, it's, it's, it's been very good, but obviously it can happen. I think in those instances, just make sure you've got a bit of contingency in place, such as you know direct contact phone number, so you can at least carry on a communication in the event that there's a, a failure in that sense of the word. Okay. So use of ICT then, so information communication technology, just to, to um, just to kind of just to if you like recap on those points because it is a fundamental to a to remote audit okay so find a platform that works for you it doesn't need to be dictated by by NQA or your certification body or anyone who's undertaking the audit 
make sure it's one that suits you. If it's a platform that you're happy with, feel comfortable with, yes, that's absolutely fine, okay? We have found, having said that, obviously a more interactive platform, so one that allows for video calling, absolutely, uh, screen sharing and so on, it, it can be more effective because it just allows for a more kind of human approach to the whole thing, okay? Test, absolutely, yep, do a dry run. I'm doing a couple this afternoon, like I say, with clients for audits next week to make sure they're happy, uh, make sure everyone's got the, the right software updates, webcams and so on and so forth, um, make sure they know how to prevent, uh, sorry, prevent, present uh, information and so on and so forth. So it sounds basic, but you know, it's, it's, it's a good little check to have. You don't want to get to the day and then discover that there's a, a fundamental issue there, okay? You may need to generate some work instructions or training and or update your management system to reflect the change in practice. So, for example, if uh, you're undertaking internal audits, as, uh, sorry, remote internal audits as part of your management system, has your, you know, has your processes been updated to reflect that and so on and so forth. There may be some changes internally. Um, I know us at NQA, we've had to um, make some changes to our processes and different forms and steps we need to introduce, but um, just make sure the management system is uh, reflecting that. Okay. Fundamentally, about it's, it's about it making sure that you know that the, the platform can achieve the objectives. That is, undertaking an audit, ensuring compliance, getting the evidence through, and so on and so forth. Okay, and communicating with you as a client. <clears throat> so some of the things specific then, or in peculiar to preparing for a uh, an external audit. Okay. Um, obviously, request a plan, absolutely, uh, nothing wrong with that at all. Request it as early on as you like, request clarification, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, please feel free to do that, okay? Confirm the auditees that are required, so from your side of things, um, just confirm with us. Again, go direct to your auditor or account manager, whoever it may be, and say, look, okay, just need to confirm that who's available, there may be people you know, unavailable for whatever reason, uh, clarify with us on that. Confirm timings, absolutely. Uh, confirm documentation or evidence that is required. So in particular, you know, you say, is there anything out, out of the ordinary or in particular that you may need to see as part of this audit? Clarify that, absolutely fine. Confirm the communication platform, like we've already said. Test the platform and uh, confirm the internet connectivity. It's, um, everyone seems so far uh, that I've been involved with seems fairly stable, but obviously there's always, um, always prudent to make sure that it's as stable as it can be. <clears throat> Like I say, obviously, when you're going to go in an external audit, like we mentioned earlier, confirm the information security arrangements. Obviously, you've got, I mentioned earlier about NQAs there. Obviously, if you've got another certification body, feel free to clarify with them on that, on what their arrangements are, and that they, they, they align with what you need. Okay. Communicate with your team. So if you've got, if you're part of an audit team on uh, your side of things, make sure you disseminate the information that's coming through to you so that people know where to be and when. Okay. Confirm with your auditor or the certification body if site tours, photos, videos are, are required, you know, kind of the arrangements and logistical for that. We, we just, just clarify with, with your auditor what's needed so you can prepare for that before, before the, uh, the event. And also confirm the arrangements if the visit cannot be completed for whatever reason. So contingencies there, like I say, uh, we'll endeavour to undertake the vast majority on uh, remotely, but in the instances where it can't be, obviously feel free to have that conversation. Maybe required uh, to uh, you know demonstrate how your system has been reviewed and updated just to reflect uh, the changes that have gone on. There may be things from particularly from the health and safety side of things um, that you, you may need to be able to demonstrate, such as revised risk assessments and operational controls. Certainly can form a good basis for your uh, external audit preparation. And like Bucky says there, be prepared to explain the remote internal audit arrangements as uh, if indeed that is the case. So if you're undertaking your own internal audits remotely, just be prepared to kind of, you know, just to, to sort of qualify that and how you're, how you're undertaking those from now on. So just on that theme then, uh, on internal audits, okay, so I'm going to run just a handful of slides now just on a bit about internal audits and kind of some things to consider. Obviously, all the things that we've spoken about so far, uh, the same rules apply for, to internal audits. Obviously, we'll just have um, a little run through, just, just a couple of points to consider that have come up during my own audits that I've, that I've picked up, okay? So, obviously, yeah, when it comes to internal auditing, yeah, obviously, make sure kind of you keep the scope clear, okay? Obviously, in terms of what you're actually undertaking uh, the internal audit of or on, uh, obviously, fundamentally, it's going to be the scope of your management system, which, you, which should align with your, um, with your certificate, okay? Establish whether or not it's going to be desktop or live. You know, you, you may feel more comfortable undertaking internal audits as a, as a bit of a hybrid, if you like. So just, de just determine which um, parts of that are going to be on site and which remote. Okay, so nothing 
nothing, nothing stopping you doing that. Okay. Obviously, as part of effective internal auditing, yeah, absolutely. You know, take into account checklists or uh, other improvement tools. Okay, they, they, they are, you know, they're, they're a requirement of the standard, and we do need to see them. But obviously, if you have to do them, uh, make sure that you get some uh, some value from them. Okay. When it comes to uh, planning your audits, same rules apply, okay, when it comes to external side of things. So prepare your clients, uh, your client, if you're doing a second party audit or your, your internal staff there, workers, make sure that they're happy enough with the comfortable approach that's going to be going on, okay? Who needs to be involved? Members of the leadership team and so on. So same rules apply when it comes to external audits. Obviously, you'd be expected to undertake a similar approach and similar coverage when it comes to your, um, your internal people, okay? In advance of the agreed audit dates, send a detailed plan for distribution. Okay, absolutely saying it's a good, 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 good approach. As much detail in there as you possibly can. And just the quick illustration of that, um, kind of an example of one of my colleagues' plans. Um, Jude, uh, who who comes out to she make them out to some of you I don't know, um, but basically kind of this is kind of a little indication of the format, if you like, of the plans that um, that we we're issuing out. So. Timings, absolutely. Location, department, and function, so on. We're also including there the method, okay, by which means um, it's the information is going to be obtained. So, like it mentions there, Skype or Zoom, or whether it's just document transmittal by email and so on. And then also a little indication as to the type of records that may be required. So, just to kind of you know, you may be familiar with the process, but it, there's no harm in actually kind of just you know kind of making solidifying that and giving people a bit of an indication as to what um, they may be expected to be provided, okay. So general approach then, okay, absolute, yeah, ensure everybody knows their role for the day and their availability, absolutely, no problems with that. And if any changes do happen, which is okay, obviously make sure the schedule and the plan's updated to reflect that, okay. Test communication methods, e.g. Teams or and so on, make sure everyone internally is familiar with that. Uh, make sure required know how to use their platform, absolutely. And um, obviously, again, get, get the buy-in from the company, you know, it's um, as with any audit, in particular internal audits and remote audits, it's making sure that people understand and, you know, the, 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 the puzzle, the part of the puzzle that they, they make up, get, get people's involvement in the whole thing and get them to support it with you. So with regards to the audit itself then, um, for those of you who are familiar with ISO 9001, the term documented information appears some 59 times in there, okay? So basically when you're auditing, so this is part and parcel of re, uh, remote audits as well, it's kind of that documented information that should be available regardless, okay, whether or not it's remote or, or on site, that documentation. Now whatever format that takes, whether it's soft or hard copy, that needs to be made available. So um, yeah, do, do, do keep that at the back of your mind, okay? Obviously all the standards have various uh, varying but different uh, and require, uh, requirements when it comes to documented information. So just make sure that you're familiar with that and what may be requested. Okay, now I think that nowadays, big chunk of things is uh, the information is held um, soft copy, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue, but obviously just make sure you're aware of what may be asked for. Okay, like it says there, keep ha make sure you keep a bit of a break uh, into the whole in proceedings. Don't don't be afraid to have uh, have comfort breaks, steps away from the screen. It's um, it's entirely you know feasible. We'll, we'll accommodate uh, you on that, and the same goes for internal audits as well. <clears throat> so operationally side of things then, this can be a little bit of a stumbling block when it comes to uh, remote auditing, but don't, don't shy away from it, obviously, so we, we'll approach it from uh, an external perspective, we'll, like I say, we'll undertake site tours, interviews with people, um, it's not just about reviewing documentation, it's good to see as much live information as possible, okay, but I think keep it simple, obviously, you know, kind of have the interviews that you need to, have interviews with people over the phone, via various platforms, and just uh, make sure that you engage to a sufficient level, just really fundamentally, this is about having confidence and undertaking an effective audit, okay? So same rules apply from an external side as they do internally, okay? But as always, level of documentation will be industry and scopes dependent, okay? So obviously we'll adjust, um, uh, uh, you know, cut that cloth accordingly, and the same should be taken into consideration when you're undertaking your own internal audits. Just remember to bear that in mind, keep things in context, okay? So when you're taking an audit of operations then, okay, so look at a process, you know, kind of look, uh, can you demonstrate that process is in place and users know what it is? Can we see a live example? So for, you know, kind of, it's all very well looking at documentation and proving that something has happened, but there's no substitute for looking at something, if you like, in real time to make sure you can actually see this happening there and then, and the person understands what they should be doing, okay? 
Um, look at the order processes, follow the same when it comes to auditing, fo follow the process as best you can, you know, it's um, in, in a logical order, follow that process approach from beginning to end, an order through to kind of review, through to, through to completion, okay? Look to trace materials back, purchases and so on and so forth. Um, obviously, fundamentally, it's basically what we're looking for and what you should be looking for internally is that you're following that, that, that process from beginning to end and it's in, in conformance with your own uh, in, internal arrangements, okay? So a handful of things to consider then when it comes to operational uh, audits. Don't shy away from them. Um, they, they are possible to do uh, remotely. I've been doing a number of them and uh, you, you can do them internally as well. It's, um, it's entirely possible. So performance evaluation then, so when it comes to your internal audits remotely, again, an important part of the standard, obviously, we'll look to see evidence of your own performance evaluation, be it internal audits and non-conformity uh, addressing and so on and so forth, management reviews and so on. Make sure that you cover that within your own internal audits. These are kind of things that can fundamentally be, uh, be audited relatively effectively remotely, so uh, looking through documentation and subsequent conversations with, um, with relevant uh, personnel. Okay, so make sure that it's covered within your internal audits there. It's like I say, it's, it's, it's easy enough to do remotely. Um, obviously, just make sure you've got the right information and the right people to talk to. Okay, so a handful of things to take away then, just coming towards the end now. Um, so make your life easier, okay? So if documents can be emailed over, okay, do that, do that before. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. If you want to send uh, documents beforehand, absolutely before the audit, say, look, okay, this is the information that's coming through. That's fine. We can start to compile that. If you want to do it there and in, in, on live on the day, that's absolutely fine too. But um, you know, you just make sure that you you, you, can, you be prepared to kind of explain the process. Okay. Don't lose the art of conversation. I know sometimes uh, I've, I've I've seen um, auditors fall foul of it. You kind of particularly with remotely, it can become a bit of a a distant kind of lonely process okay it's not just about sitting in uh, sitting in your office at home or your bedroom or your kitchen and looking through things really do make sure you engage in conversation and we'll endeavor to do the same as well without with our external audits okay we'll always make a point of having the same conversations or similar conversations as i would if i was face to face with someone okay absolutely don't panic i know it's a bit an easy thing to say and obviously there's, there's an awful lot going on for everyone but obviously um this process is about kind of supporting you it's unusual for everyone but obviously it has been i'm not saying it just for the sake of it it has been working very well very effectively for me and the whole of nqa it's been um clients have been very responsive to it and um it has been going very very well so if it's your first remote audit don't be afraid um ask as many questions as you need to um like i say engage as you normally would um like i say and we'll obviously support you through the entire process okay but like i say Finally, there just be aware of secure transmitters of information. Make sure that if everything as it needs to be, if the screenshots being taken or shared, don't be afraid to kind of say, look, okay, this can't be recorded, this can't be noted, and so on. Obviously, we'll fully respect that um, with you. Okay. So um, that was it officially from me. Um, I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do. There's quite a few questions. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, let me see here. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna to go to the top and I'll answer these kind of as we go along. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully I'll answer these to, every, to everyone in the group. So if you wanna stay care on listening, you're more than welcome. If you would like to leave, again, feel free, you're more than welcome. Uh, thank you for listening. But uh, I'll answer these questions and then we will um, we'll see how we go, okay. I'll get rid of all the hellos and everything. Okay, so. Let's just see what we've got here for everyone. Well, there's lots of uh, <laughs> everyone telling me they could hear me, which was good. Okay, so right, so let's have a look here for you. So a question then: As the management representative, I'm working from home due to COVID. I still have access to the electronic documents. Is this okay for an audit? Um, yeah, the quick and dirty answer there is um, yes, it is. Uh, yeah, we, we, we're fully. Uh, um, we're accepting uh, soft copy documentation. You know, we're quite often finding that you know a management representative is working from home, whereas like maybe the production team are working on site, so to speak, and they're having to collect information and get it through to us. So yes, that, that that's absolutely fine. Okay. Uh, I think it was just a follow on there for the master, master documents are held uh, electronically, but don't contain signatures as the signed copies are or notices. But would this cause a problem? Not necessarily. Obviously, I think we've all got to be a little bit pragmatic about this whole thing. And um, I think, you know, 
uh, it's it may be instances where we will need kind of like a, a document with a wet copy signature on or something to va validate it but obviously it depends upon the document itself it's for example you know a risk assessment that has to be signed to show that it's been communicated or received we may still need that you know whether it's a scan copy or whatever it may be um, but we'll work with you as very best we can <clears throat> A um, question here, moving forward, regulators such as the UK MHRA have advised they will retain some aspects of uh, remote audits when face-to-face -face becomes possible. What aspects of remote audits will you retain? Good question. Um, it's something the the certification industry, <laughs> I think most of us, we had to react very quickly to this back in quarter one of last year. Um, I'll be honest with you, before that time, remote audits were just didn't happen. I'd never done one in my life. You know, I'd had conversations with people, but I'd, I'd had documents emailed over, but I've never done a remote audit. Okay, so but since that time, I've done like I say, 97, 98 percent of my audits remotely. Um, moving forward, the industry is yet to be finalised. Um, we're, obviously, it's been worked on as we speak. We, we expect it's going to take some form of hybrid approach, for, for want of a better word, and we, we expect things such as. Um, I would imagine things like the things that could be rude, like documentation, such as internal audits and management reviews, objectives, aspects and impacts, all those things that are traditionally kind of documentation. There's no reason why that can't be carried on uh, as, a, as, a, as a remote process. Obviously, it's yet to be finalised and, and definitive. And obviously, but then we anticipate elements such as uh, temporary sites, such as construction sites or manufacturing and so on site tours. They will need to be like a, an on-site element just because it's just it's more practical uh, to do so. So yes, moving forward, we, we fully anticipate some form of hybrid approach to, to all audits moving forward. Uh, how are you finding audits where clients use external audit support consultants? Yeah, they've been absolutely fine. Um, like I say, a big percentage of my audits, uh, they, they employ a consultant, absolutely fine. Uh, all we've been doing in those instances with the client's blessing is obviously inviting the um, the consultants to the meeting as well, or they can do that. If the client, if you, if you, if you as the client want to set up the audit invitation, that's absolutely fine. You know, we don't mind who attends the audit. Obviously, what does apply is that, you know, we, we Yes, obviously we'll engage with the consultant, absolutely, but we won't rely upon them necessarily for the information because it's a test of your management system and not not the consultant. Okay, we're auditing you and not the consultant. So, but that will be that's the same rules for um, for any audit situation. Okay, are electronic signatures acceptable? Um, I yes, I mean I've not come across anything anything to contravene that. Um, I know some documents they require a wet signature legally um in an audit situation obviously you know if it's demonstrable that the, the signature is suitable and that it's valid i can't see that being an issue uh question there when do we expect to get back up to on-site audits well <laughs> we were venturing back onto the site and the tail end of last year then obviously when things uh went unusual again uh, over christmas we've had to go back to fully remote we, we expect to obviously subject to government guidance we expect to be back on site in well towards kind of you know the beginning of March, uh, God willing. Obviously, depending on situations, but obviously we'll maintain a um, a communication with with all clients on that and your auditors. If you've got any questions about an individual audit, please feel free to go back to them um, as uh, you know, to, with a direct question. That's fine. But we're we're not going anywhere near site certainly until towards uh, the end of February at the absolute earliest. Um, do you see remote auditing becoming the new normal? I believe, yeah, like I said earlier, I don't think it would, it would never be entirely remote, obviously, because I don't think to some degree it's an, you know it's fully effective in some instances. Don't get me wrong, it has been effective for a big, big percentage, but um, I think there will it will be a hybrid approach moving forward um, just to kind of qualify both elements of that uh, of the process. Uh, Someone say thank you. You're more, you're more than welcome. Um, no problem at all. Thank you for everyone who said it was helpful. And that's no problem at all. You're more than welcome. Um, one here, if certain aspects of the standard cannot be assessed uh, due to production or business restrictions due to the pandemic, will certification be delayed? Um, I suppose it's a little bit, if it's a, I suppose there's a couple of scenarios here. If it's an initial assessment, so someone, if you're going for a new certification to a new standard or a new certification entirely, and there's fundamentally something within the system we cannot audit, um, that could be a little bit prohibitive with regards to issuing a certificate. And we would look to obviously defer that, but to keep it within a, a shorter time frame as possible. I think a maximum of kind of sort of six months or so. Um, hopefully we won't be in this situation in six months time. Obviously, if it's say that's for initial assessment or new certification, um, if it's a routine surveillance or reassessment, 
there's lots of ways around it. You know, we'll obviously, you know, if, if we can take into consideration, you know, kind of uh, an activity, we can see documentation that shows that activity is being controlled up until a certain point, we can do that. But it may be obviously that we may just need to defer a percentage of the time. But what we'd look to do is undertake as much of the audit as we can, you know, kind of up to 70% plus uh, of the audit remotely so that we can kind of basically we haven't got to defer the entire audit time to further in the year because that just could cause um, chaos for everyone. You can imagine if everyone de de defer their audit, it could be um, pretty hectic as time goes on. So, um, yeah, if there's something we can't look at and it's going to um, cause a problem for the certification, there, there, there is there are um, arrangements in place to allow for um, you know kind of you know uh, extension certificate and that kind of thing and 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 and, and that kind of thing and, and various uh, what should we say. Um, tolerances in place but obviously that is on a case by case basis where it's not just a default position we'd need to make sure that obviously that's looked at on a case by case and it's not just a default extension but we would um, we'd have to look at that for you okay uh what's this one they haven't been part of a remote audit carried out by a client on us i've noted this remote auditing gives the auditor more opportunities after the audit has been carried out to have a second third, fourth and by the cherry so to speak uh, and request further documentation for something that may have forgotten uh, to ask during the initial audit, how can this be limited? Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it shouldn't be the case to be honest with you. I mean, I mean, it, there may be obviously instances whereby an auditor um, maybe has, you know, misread something or kind of needs, needs a point of clarification, but certainly as far as we're concerned, the opening meeting and the closing meetings, they are the beginning of the end of the audit, okay? Um, if there's a handful, if there's little points and you clarifying after that, that's okay, but there certainly shouldn't be any surprises. You know, fundamentally, once the, the audit has been closed off and the re report and recommendation has been um, been delivered, they shouldn't really, that, that, that's really the end of it. You know, they shouldn't be, kind of like you mentioned the phrase, there's second, third, fourth, but the cherry, you know, it can be kind of, you know, a week later, oh, now send us this, now send us that, because an audit has to end at some point, you know. Um, so I think if for whatever reason, the auditor can't give a definition, or oh, sorry, you know, a, a, a conclusion or a recommendation at the end of the audit, it needs to be clear as to why that is and what information they need, you know, because um, if there's, if, if they need more information, it suggests that either, <laughs> They haven't requested it and the, they haven't managed the time correctly, or maybe it hasn't been forthcoming from from the audit side, which is possible. But obviously, that needs to be agreed and say, look, okay, this can't just keep can't be open ended. It needs to be a line drawn under it. Okay, and I think that's um that's you know you you are within your rights to kind of just clarify that at the closing meeting. So okay, where is this where is this going to go? Okay. Uh, Someone said we have a week-long audit that will be looked at for seven days. If we oh, hang on, sorry, we have a week-long audit. What will be looked at for seven days if we send stuff over earlier? Um, okay, it's um, it's basically yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, if there can be a percentage of the audit, I think fundamentally the audit time is the audit time. Okay, it's, that that won't necessarily change. Um, so if you send all information over previously. And you know the auditor is going to agreed, you know that it, they're going to spend a period of time on that. There may be an adjustment on the audit plan to compensate for that, but obviously that needs to be agreed um, with the certification body and the auditor. So um, you know if there's any time adjustments on the audit, as in the agreed seven days, um, and they've already spent a day looking at documents, I don't know. Um, obviously that doesn't mean a day will come off, but obviously that needs to be done on a day by uh, case by case basis because um, obviously I don't, I'm not fully aware of the context of, of the organisation there, but yeah. And just a couple of thank you. So I think that's it. So I can't see any more. Hopefully I've answered the questions. If there is anything that um, you wanted to ask or thought of, please feel free to um, go via the office there. You'll get, like I say, you get copies of this um, webinar and the slides as part of this process. Um, and that's it. So yeah, stay safe, everyone. Um, enjoy your remote audits. <laughs> and um, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on another one of these some point soon. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.